And now, live from Smoke on the Water in Greenville's West End, here is Straight Up with Sturge with Mark Sturgis. All right, welcome back in. 8.05 on this hump day edition of uh, Straight Up with Sturge here on Talk Sports 104.9. And now, I don't know if this will be a treat for y'all. I know it will be, but it's a daggum treat for me as I get to be joined by one of my good friends, Adrian Branch with ESPN, in-studio basketball analyst as well as color analyst. And, you know, A.B., you'll always be an ACC basketball legend because I don't care where your Terps are going to be playing this fall. <laughs> Don't break my heart, man. And I, I still got to get used to uh, Big Ten Maryland and the Big Ten. Come on, Sturgy. Wow. I mean, how bad is this hurting you? I, I mean, be honest with you. You're a Maryland guy. You're a Maryland alum. You bled. You sweated. You, uh, you, know, you gave your all for Maryland in your days there. Does it just stick in your crawl a little bit that you will always be an ACC basketball legend, but your Terps oh. are now members of the Big Ten? Man, I mean, Michael Jordan, Ralph Sampson, uh, James Worthy, man, ACC basketball is the best in the business. And uh, the money uh, bought it out. Now we're going to get mad at Nebraska, Maryland yeah. versus Nebraska. Northwestern. <laughs> I mean, come, on, me, come on, you're kidding me. So uh, the money rules the day. We were in that conference for, what, 52 years. I was very, very proud of the contribution. The, the location is fantastic. Uh, on the East Coast, and uh, Mark, it, it's just so many good things about playing in the ACC that we'll miss. Yeah, yeah I mean, I, and you forgot about one of my favorites back then. Of course, you know what I said at you, your, uh, your trip into Little John after your little bit of trouble, but don't forget about Jeff Lamp, that, uh, that little corner shooting forward from the oh, University of Virginia man. back then. Jeff Lamp that can shoot the ball. Oh. Wilson. I mean, the, the history, the ACC history yeah. is outstanding. David Thompson, uh, you've got some of the best in the history of the game that has played in that league. And again, you know, one thing is for cer- certain is change. Uh, it's not sitting with me, to be honest with you, but uh, I'm loyal. I'll have to support my Terrapins, but I don't like it. Yeah, I can imagine. All right. Well, here at the local level, A.B., Clemson basketball suffered yet another loss last week as Patrick Rooks, right there from your hometown of Charlotte, was lost for the season with a hip injury. I mean, Adrian, uh, this is a program here in Tigertown that just can't catch a break right now. Can you make anything of Clemson this year in this revamped ACC? Well, one thing, you know what? You, you need talent to win, and you need talent to consistently win consistently. And if you think about this for a minute, Oliver Purnell, I thought it was a great uh, uh, um, change-off, uh, trade-off. I, I thought it was a great trade-off. Mm-hmm. You guys have been to the NCAA tournament. You guys were winning games. Clemson's branding in basketball was very respected. And I thought he plateaued. What, after eight, nine, ten years, he plateaued. Brad Brown now is a fantastic coach. Uh, he's not flashy, almost in the Herb Sendek, where Herb Sendek was not flashy, but he got his teams into the NCAA tournament. And Clemson will win ugly. He's going to coach them. They're going to be prepared. The question on the table will be for a long season, Mark, will they be able to score enough points and then keep up in the second half in February when you need to get a deep bench and you have talent. Will their talent uh, come back to haunt them for games that they might not be able to close out? Yeah, and, you know, it, it's hard to get a read on this team because they went over to Italy about a month ago and boat raced everybody, including a professional team, an all-star team. But, you know, when you start looking at that, Adrian, the quality of competition just wasn't up to par. So it's hard to make anything out of it. But one thing that they really liked was playing under the international clock rules. And I don't understand why NCAA basketball, A.B., has made it to where they're the slowest game in the world with this shot clock. (laughs) And quite frankly, in many of these games, A.B., it's getting difficult to watch. Well, you know what? I still uh, I played overseas for seven years in Israel, Spain, Turkey, France, Australia, and the Philippines, and Thailand. Um, you know what? I'm going to be slow to complain on that one, and I'll tell you why. I'm still thankful. Back when I played, think about this. Back when I played, there was no shot clock. Oh, no. no you were. Point line. 
So you were having to face Dean Smith. points back with no shot clock. Man, there were games when we stopped for half a season. My freshman mm-hmm. year, so I might have scored 3,000 points. There you go. You would have been so the best I'm McDonald's sure, all I'm slow to warm. I'm not going to complain because I played in the dark ages when there wasn't a shot clock and it wasn't a three-point line. I love it. I wish it gets down to high school now, Sturgey, because it displays skill. When, you have to, when you're forced to go against somebody and, and get a shot off, it displays skill and strategy. Now, what do you miss more, those days of uh, uh, basketball or the short shorts? I mean, because y'all wore some short shorts back then, baby. You, you know what? I love my wife, man, to pieces, and I wouldn't wear those short shorts in front of her. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, obviously, it's the, it's the competition. But you know what? Uh, uh, t- talking about my wife, Kim, you know what? Uh, I really respect her now. I've been out the game 15 years, and I remember her saying, you know, play until it's out your system so you have no regrets. And, you know, Mark, I'll name drop like your wife, Teresa. We, we have gems. So uh, I look back at it. It was my turn. Uh, I, it's over. I'm okay for it to be over. I'm not going to sound like Michael Jordan. I can beat this one one-on-one. I can beat that one. Mike, leave it alone. It's over, yeah. baby. It's over. <laughs> Now, Adrian, as we head into this year, uh, you know, and again, football's driving the bus in the NCAA, but college basketball, if you listen to the talking heads, has been suffering in some shape or fashion. Now you're starting to see some of the brighter coaches, younger coaches in the game, and I don't blame them for leaving Butler and going to the Boston Celtics, you know, uh, things of that nature. But, Adrian, if you were made NCAA basketball czar for 24 hours, because we love to throw that term czar around in this country. You know, uh, the betting czar, the drug czar. I make you NCAA basketball czar for 24 hours. What's the first thing that you would do to change the game of college basketball? I'd fire all the referees. <laughs> <laughs> or at least get them on the first same page. I'd fire all the referees. Because I want y'all to know something. Watch this. Well, I better not say that. Um, I'll say this. I'll say this. I'll say this. Uh, outside of firing all the refs, uh, I would I would give the players a stipend. I really would. Uh, whatever it came out to be, uh, the bigger programs, a bigger stipend. Uh, Clemson football, uh, Alabama football, they generate more money than, say, Bowie State or Montana Technical College. Come on. So I would give them a stipend. If that's $300 a month uh, for the four years they're there, I, if I was the first czar I would do, I would give them a stipend. All right. Now we're talking with Adrian Branch, ESPN's uh, in-studio basketball analyst, also does some uh, color on some uh, broadcasts. Of course, uh, the experts with our friend Anish last night who dropped on us A.B. Anish drops on us his favorite A.B. line of all time. When the rabbit got the gun, it ain't no fun. Talking about upsets. I absolutely oh, laughed wow. the entire way yeah. home here from ain't Smoke no on the Water. When the rabbit got the gun. <laughs> yeah. All right. I know it breaks your heart at this point to talk about ACC basketball, but what are your expectations uh, for this league moving into 2013? Because there's a lot of questions with Syracuse and Pitt and Notre Dame coming into the league this year. Uh, you know, I don't know what to expect. Oh, man, I, I think it's great. I think it's great. you got Hall of Fame coaches and Jim Beheim. You've got one of the winningest coaches uh, and Jamie Dixon for the last seven years before it got thin in uh, Pittsburgh. They, they have a brand that's physical. Uh, you have the, the usual suspects. Duke, who's going to go small ball, but it's going to be very, very hard to guard offensively. Carolina, if they can toughen up and get an inside presence from Joel James and McAdoo that will be consistent in big games, will be huge. Uh, You look at Maryland, they're going to be competitive. Clemson will be tough and feisty at home. So everybody has a distinct chance to win games, to upset each other. It's going to be fantastic. It's going to be fantastic. Now, you know, when we look a little bit across the country, who would you say is number one heading into next month's action? Can it be Kentucky with all those new freshmen coming in? Because, quite frankly, last year it just didn't mesh for them and they end up losing in the first round of the NIT. But, good Lord, that recruiting class that uh, Calipari has put together may be the most powerful ever, in my opinion. Yeah, loaded. It's fair to say that, Mark. And 
uh, it'll really uh, prove merit if they can win games like uh, the Fab Five. They're talking about them surpassing the Fab Five. Well, the Fab Five with Chris Webber, Jalen Rose, and Jawan Howard, uh, they got to the Final Four. So these guys at least have to knock on the door of Elite Eight and have to be dominating. I'm going to go with the safe money, and I think right now it's okay to say uh, uh, Louisville. They have a Hall of Fame coach. They're hungry. Uh, They have all the key pieces back short of uh, Peyton Seaver and Gorgie Jang, who who was blocking shots. But uh, Louisville is a safe pick, and they're going to be picking you up and picking their spots defensively. They can turn a dribbler. So right now, Louisville, Kentucky, I'm just going to sit back and really become impressed again about John Calipari molding superstar talent uh, five guys becoming one now adrian you know you and i've had the fortunes of working together in the past and and you're one of the classiest guys that uh that i've ever ever been around but i want to ask you an honest question when ucla <laughs> gets rid of ben Hallen and they hire uh uh Oh, from New Mexico, Steve Alford. Uh, Steve Steve Alford. Alford. I couldn't buy that one because, you know, it's supposed to be showtime out there in Los Angeles, but Steve Alford plays a completely different brand of basketball. What was that yeah. hire all about? Because I, I, that was just one that I couldn't grasp when it came down. Well, some of the key alumni were just slamming them. Bill Walton didn't give them a chance. So Bill Walton was uh, disconnecting with them, who, is, of course, is a UCL late, a legend. Uh, the uh, uh, AAU programs right there, they were missing a lot of homegrown talent. And then you start taking for granted. They want another style. They want to open it up. They want to get that uh, – uh, who's the L.A. Laker coach right now? Dan Tony. They want to get that mm-hmm. Dan Tony flavor. But the wild part – Steve Alford, he's going to run that swing off, and they're going to get into you defensively like Ben Howland. But you always want something that you don't have on L.A. And so this is the new flavor of the month. You just better win. Whatever it is, you better win, and you better get that uh, L.A. homegrown West Coast talent. All right, uh, final question. We're going to give you the opportunity to espouse the virtues of Terrapin football as they head down to Tallahassee undefeated at 4-0, A.B., and they get a chance to take on the Seminoles this weekend. Do your Terps have a shot, or is it just sick? uh, You know, can we say it ain't no fun when the Rabbits got the gun? Well, we'd be the Rabbit holding the gun right now. You know what? (laughs) Cheap. Hold, claw, and don't wake up my Terps. Don't wake up my Terps because I'm like, really? My boys are nationally right? Really? So it's like, you know what? From a Terp uh, to watching my Terps, don't wake them up. All right. Well, great. Well, listen, uh, give us an idea when y'all get started with all your programming for basketball on ESPN, ESPNU. Y'all do a fantastic job with the experts. I love watching that on a daily basis. But we're just about ready to start cranking everything up for college basketball. Oh, yeah. I start uh, on the 22nd of October. Yes, you have some Big Ten game uh, preview shows. And then on Halloween, on the 31st, uh, uh, Big 12 preview show. So we're going to be starting up in the next two weeks. And again, man, it's just happening. Fun. It's respecting the branding, talking about your favorite college basketball teams. And I think this year is going to be something they'll be proud of again in college basketball. <laughs> well, A.B., thank you for your time as always. My best to Kim, my best to the girls, a little A down in Wilmington. And I uh, look forward to seeing you up here in Charlotte, hopefully in the next couple of weeks for Operation Basketball. My man, my man. Mark, you're the best, man. Thanks for calling. All right, you have a great night. Adrian Branch from ESPN, I'm I telling you what, just a pleasure. You know, I've talked to him a couple of times this week. It's gotten a lot sillier in our phone calls than it did there over the air, but just a great guy, a great representative for the University of Maryland. And, again, how bad does it hurt him to see his Terps go off to the Big Ten, knowing that he will always be in that circle of honor as an ACC basketball legend? Has to be frustrating. All right, uh, before we go out to break, I want to tell you about our good friends over at Rogers Feed and Supply, located at 1041 Easley Highway in Pelzer. Here's how you get to them. You go to exit 32 off I-D5. You go east two miles. As soon as you cross over the Highway 29 bridge, they're going to be immediately on your right. Now, listen, it's time to plant grass seed. 
Start thinking about fertilizer, cleaning out those beds, because you got to do that in the fall. I'm seeing grass come up in our front yard. I never, ever thought with that tree cover that I'd ever see it again. You know, that moss, I made fun. That moss from the street, it looks just as green as grass. But let me tell you, grass looks even better. They've got you covered with everything. And they know, you know, I can. they can tell you, Jason Rogers in the game, this kind of grass seed's going to grow under in sunlight. This, is, this will help grow in the shade. They've got the answers. It's unbelievable. When it comes to pet food, Rogers Feed and Supply has made their name because they're carrying brands made right here in the good old U.S. of A., and they've got it for cheaper than you can find it anywhere else. I'm talking 50-pound bags of top-of-the-line pet food starting as low as $15.99. As a matter of fact, the number one selling uh, brands, the Wholesome Chicken and Rice, it contains no corn, no wheat, no soy, and it only runs $29.99 for a 40-pound bag. I mean, that's you can't give Fido any better nutrition than the wholesome chicken and rice. And if you feel like that's a, you know, a little bit of a gamble that you may not want to spend that kind of money, you can go by Rogers Feed and Supply. They're going to hook you up with a sample. And just look in your dog's face. Look, uh, watch him wag his tail at how happy he is over uh, over that great pet food. Deer hunters, they got you covered with everything. I mean, Antler Max deer feeds, the popular trophy rocks, not to mention uh, food plot seeds. Also, it's legal to feed and bait deer this year in the upstate. So Rogers Feed and Supply has you covered with 50-pound bags of whole corn for $9.99.